Hola cripto amigos, ¿cómo están? Muchos me preguntaron qué fue lo más importante que dejó Vitalik de su pasada por la Argentina. Entonces les preparé este resumen con subtitulados en español de los puntos que a mí me parecieron más importantes de la charla. Yo estuve ahí, la presencié y la vi toda. La verdad que habló de varios temas interesantes, de cómo ve la Argentina, de qué va a pasar con el Proof of Work migrando a Ethereum 2.0 a Proof of Stake, qué pasa con los NFTs, habló de un bear market y habló también de los jóvenes. Vamos a las pantallas y les muestro el resumen. How are you liking Buenos Aires and Argentina? I'm uh, very impressed. I uh, yeah, definitely was not expecting to see a, a, community, just a, crypt, a, a community of anywhere close to this uh, level of uh, size and uh, energy. Um, just the number of people here, the number of projects here, the uh, excitement of the uh, people here, um, and is uh, definitely amazing. It's uh, much more than I've expected, even more than I've uh, seen, I think, pretty much anywhere else in, uh, um, in the world so far. Um, so, yeah, no, I think it's... Uh, yeah, no, it's... Uh, yeah, yeah. I think people are incredibly excited that you are here and... Mm -hmm. For what I've seen, had you experienced this level of rock star in anywhere else? No. No. <laughs> First time. Mm -hmm. How do you like it? Oh dear. Oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Do you sometimes regret that you went public with this, or? That's a good question. I don't know. I haven't really thought about that. Okay. Hmm. How would you describe the Argentinians? Uh, after the, these very first days that you were hanging out with us? How do I describe Argentina? Mm -hmm. um, I guess um, people seem uh, very friendly. The city is very nice. It's, uh, it feels like a, yeah, you know, a good place to spend time. Um, people, the, the, the people here seem very smart and uh, very motivated. Like I think the, the difference between here and um, some of the wealthier countries is um, that like in wealthier places there's people who are excited about like crypto as like the, the ideas and the theory. But people here, like, they yeah, feel this very kind of genuine excitement that like, like they deeply understand that, that this is something that's uh, solving real problems for them and like, very connected to like the fact that they're the, the, the blockchains and cryptocurrency are already providing like, a lot of uh, value to people here and like every day and and, and very easily could provide uh, even uh, even more value i think decentralization could help a country mm. that has a shaken currency mm -hmm. yeah um, one of like the, the impression i've gotten of uh, argentina so far is that it's a uh, country that has a uh, low state capacity but uh, very high people capacity um, wow. And that's uh, something that I think in some ways might even be the perfect uh, environment for uh, blockchains to make a big impact. Um, like it's uh, like just the fact that, you know, the peso is uh, inflating uh, very quickly and like people just understand the fact that like they uh, can't, you know, like they can't hold it for long periods of time. They have to like constantly work with money um, and like constantly figure out like how to like avoid getting hit by the inflation. Like constantly think how to like juggle between different assets. It's uh, like in environments where people can like see very clearly kind of like what money is, how money works. Um, and uh, uh, one where people I think are uh, well, already are open to new ideas and uh, like I'm, I've definitely already been uh, seeing some uh, signs of like I, it's like lots of people who are just like not so much like restaurants and cafes yet from what I can tell but just like regular people in you know, just like various places who you know already accept uh, crypto as a form of payment and it's uh, you know, providing value as a, a medium of exchange and a, a store of value already um, it, there's a uh, you know, people um, working on, like, even just all of these, like, decentralized projects, like, uh, um, going beyond currency, like, all of these, uh, you know, the DAOs, like, um, NFTs, like, all of these things, like, I think people just, 
like, understands the value very easily. Um, so I think there's a lot of potential. Um, though I think, uh, like, what kinds of uh, applications end up uh, working? I think, like, I pers like I I can't even predict it ahead of time. Like, I'm terrible at predicting. Like, two, three years ago, I was on TechCrunch in San Francisco, and I told the, the entire stage that NFTs are overrated. <laughs> um, so, I, like, I think it's ultimately uh, up to the Argentine people to like, uh, figure out what um, applications can succeed and to actually make it happen. Mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> On the regulatory aspects, for a lot of these use cases, we need a Ethereum to scale. Yes. How are things going on that front? Mm -hmm. um, so right now, for like, we have this, uh, you know, there's like, a lot of things that are happening in parallel in the Ethereum protocol, right? Um, I, like, about a couple of weeks ago, I published this kind of roadmap diagram trying to uh, describe what's going on, where you, know, you have the merge, the surge, the verge, the purge, the splurge. These so are, this, this uh, new roadmap. So I right. was on the faces roadmap. So mm -hmm. now we have the merge, the splurge. The verge, the purge, and the surge, yes. It um, looks so, like a poem. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Um, so, um, I mean, a lot, like, a lot of the ideas are the same. I just kind of like drew the boxes in different ways and gave, and gave them funny names. I mean, you know, I hope people like the funny names and use them. Um, but like the merge, obviously, proof of stake. Um, I think, uh, you know, we all um, I love uh, proof of stake. Well, okay, I mean, I should say, I mean, there are important things that, that, that do get lost with the switch to proof of stake, right? Like there's, uh, like I think even if you look at like the early stages of mining, right, with proof of work, like Bitcoin from 2009 to 2012, it was this like very democratic thing. Anyone with a, like a, a computer could just like go and get Bitcoin, right? And I think like if that did not exist, Bitcoin would not have succeeded, right? And, and like with Ethereum too, I think the uh, six years of uh, mining that we've had so far, like in terms of just opening up the supply more and letting more people get ETH, I think it's done a lot of good. But at the same time, like in the long term, uh, like it's uh, an industry that centralizes more and more and you start to, like you have to be a, a business, you have to have like access to cheap electricity. And at the end of the day, it also kills trees, right? Uh, so the switch to proof of stake, I think, is like very important from us um, for, for just for like, the environmental reasons and also the efficiency reasons. Like it's also an opportunity to make the protocol much better, to like, have uh, transactions confirm faster, to like, make the network more efficient, um, add like light client support, just like a big long list of things. Um, so very excited about the proof of stake switch. Now the proof of stake switch by itself does not give any scalability, right? But it does make it easier to add more scalability later on. Um, so what's happening for scalability, right? This is uh, the surge. Um, so one, there's, two, there's kind of two tracks, right? There's layer one scalability and then there's layer two scalability. Back in uh, 2016, uh, Ethereum's scalability strategy was like very focused on layer one, right? Like there were all of these papers and ideas that we were writing where we would say, okay, you know, we would have all of these shards and then on every shard we would process transactions and then the protocol would provide complicated ways to move like assets and send messages between shards. Today, um, the, the, like the design is a bit different, right? Like there is layer one scaling and layer two scaling. So the idea of layer two scaling is you create these second layer networks that use the blockchain for security, right? And they're connected to the blockchain and they put a little bit, like some data for, uh, uh, from every transaction onto the blockchain, but, and which they have to do for security. But most of the computation, most of the data, most things are happening off chain, right? And so what this means is that you have a system that can scale much more than the, layer, than, than the blockchain, but, it uh, consume like it still gets all of the uh, security of the uh, blockchain, right? So, if everyone switched to rollups today, and if rollups became like as efficient as rollups could be today, then the scalability of Ethereum could go up by a factor of like about 100, right? So you go right right now, Ethereum pro go processes about. 15 to 45 transactions a second, depending on what kinds of transactions it is. With, if everyone moves to rollups and if rollups become efficient, then it could go up to like 1,500 to 4,500 transactions per second. So that's layer two scaling. What is your, your fear? We, you know, we, mm. We've seen recently like action mm. from some governments against proof of work chains, yes. against miners specifically. In China, mm -hmm. suddenly a lot of miners have to mm -hmm. find new jurisdictions. Mm -hmm. In Venezuela, mm -hmm. uh, the government surreptitiously took mm. over a lot of mining <laughs> facilities. Mm -hmm. um, 
what is the risk with proof of stake where gov if, if a government wants to take a hostile action mm -hmm. against the network? You know, what's I, your yeah, fear? Mm -hmm. I actually think proof of stake is much more censorship resistance than a proof of work. This is one of the benefits that people don't talk about enough, right? Like people focus on like being more efficient and not killing the environment, which is all true. But uh, and very important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is important. Um, but uh, the um, like censorship resistance aspect, right? Like with proof of work, what are you doing? Like basically, you're just creating this like big thing that consumes a huge amount of electricity that's just like extremely visible, you know, both to the power grid and probably to like anyone flying a helicopter over that like has an infrared camera, right? And so it's very easy to detect and like if you're mining, the go you know, the government can just like come in and just shut in and shut you down like you're probably even like way more visible than like the marijuana farms or whatever, right? Um, so like whereas with proof of stake, like all you need to be a proof of stake validator is, um, you know, you just uh, have a, you just have a computer, yeah, and the computer can be anywhere. And it's just like a tiny little computer, just like one tiny internet connection. The data bandwidth is like much less than someone torrenting. Um, so it's, uh, like I think it's very uh, censorship resistant um, and, uh, it's much more resilient in that way. Um, in that way, so you know, another good side benefit of proof of stake, especially as we add like things like zero knowledge proofs, and we can make verification more and more efficient. I mean, I'm optimistic about that. Um, that level of adoption. Yeah. So that's the verge. The verge is great. Um, what else is there? There's the purge, which is. Uh, like basically, once again, like it's even more efficiency, right? Like nodes, like nodes don't have to, you know, store the entire like seven years of history anymore. Um, clients can get smaller because, like, in, in, because they don't have to like have all of this really complicated code for things from 2015. Um, so, just like all of these different things that we, that we're doing to try to make the Ethereum protocol kind of like get lighter, become simpler, become safer um, over time. Um, like, I think. Uh, like a lot of people sometimes, like I mean, even especially from the, sometimes from the Bitcoin side, criticize Ethereum for being this kind of like big bulky thing where you know it's hard to run a node, the code is really complicated, and all of these things. But like there's all of these different things that are on the roadmap that are all about reducing that problem over time, right? Like there's like vertical trees reduce that problem a lot. Uh, <laughs> the yeah, history pruning uh, reduces that problem by a lot. Um, even like the short, the the layer two scaling strategy, right? Like it uh, reduces that uh, reduces that problem by a lot. Um, so I think uh, like my personal hope is that I think over over the next five years, like, Ethereum is going to get significantly lighter um, as, a, as a blockchain. And I think like, that's, it's really important, right? I think uh, like today there's uh, a lot of projects that try to kind of sacrifice decentralization for short-term scaling. And like, I totally get why people are using those projects, right? Like, because uh, you know, people want like, like, to be on platforms where they can like, use them and like, where sending a transaction doesn't take like, two weeks salary, um, which is like, very fair. But I think you know, there is this roadmap. Layer 2 protocols exist already. Layer 2 protocols are like, much better than they were one month ago, and they'll be even better three months from now, and they'll be even better six months from now. Um, and uh, you know, we're going to have a future where we will have scalability, and at the same time, like, I think, uh, the Ethereum community as a whole like does really cherish decentralization. I, like if you just like look at the hard work that's being done by all the client teams, if you look at the hard work that's being done by all these layer two teams, like everyone really values this. And I think uh, you know people do like people do see a, 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 a I think the same future that I see, where over the next five years, like the protocols are going to be one that's uh, like much easier to participate in, like despite being m much more scalable than even what we see today. So one of the challenges other than the technical aspects mm -hmm. is the community and the leadership mm. in these protocols. Mm -hmm. uh, how, do you, how do you lead yourself, the Ethereum community? What do you think are valuable lessons mm -hmm. that uh, you as a leader of the community, mm -hmm. uh, like good practices and, mm -hmm. and a good culture that Mm -hmm. should be instilled into many of these projects and many yeah. of these ideas. 
So I guess like my view on leadership and uh, decentralization is that like to me decentralization is not an absence of leadership, right? Decentralization is about creating structures where like there can be leaders, but it's much more based on soft power and hard power. It's like like leaders cannot just like go and say, you know, this is the, this is the way it will be because it's my will and screw you. It's much like as, to, to continue to be a leader, you have to continue to um, earn people's respect, and respect is something that you can lose at any time. Right? Um, and it's also it's about having structures where it's new leaders can emerge permissionlessly. Um, so you know, if someone has good ideas, then uh, you know they can kind of like rise up and be, and uh, get recognized naturally. And that's uh, something that I think you know the Ethereum community gets uh, better and better at. Right? Um, I think. Uh, like there are definitely projects in the crypto space that's like uh, that that do have this kind of approach to decentralization that like really is about kind of like the rejection of any kind of leaders at all and like you see, you see this sometimes especially in the projects that kind of emerge as forks like or even emerge as rebellions right like often like the way that they start is that they start as a group of people that are unhappy about you know what they see as like a centralized and dictatorial decision made by some majority but then they go off and they create their own thing but then they realize that like there's no what they, they don't really have a vision they can coordinate around right and like everyone is like too or like focused on resisting that like in the there's no good direction that the project actually ends up going right so the and anger is uh, not enough exactly yeah anger, anger is not enough you need a positive vision is there a scenario in which you would say ethereum failed mm, um, i think if ethereum fails to scale then ethereum definitely fails um, if ethereum succeeds at scaling but it turns into something that's very centralized then I think it's also failed. Um, if Ethereum succeeds at scaling and at being decentralized as a blockchain, but nothing interesting gets built on top of it and no one actually like, gets value from it, then it also fails. So those are all risks. And I think um, you know, those are definitely things that we really need to like, try hard to guard against. Um, but I think uh, there's a lot of people who are like, in the community who are very dedicated and who are trying hard to guard against all of those things. So I'm optimistic. Do you Sorry, oh, sorry. You both Do you think that ETH might end, this is not even about the flipping, might end the dominance of BTC or like op make BTC obsolete? I feel like what's happening with cryptocurrencies is that like it's one of the reasons why it's hard for any of them is to, to go to zero is that like they get really dedicated communities, right? Like these aren't just products, like these are ecosystems around communities that have values. Um, like, if you talk to Ethereum people and if you talk to Bitcoin people, like the the things that they talk about, the things that they care about, the uh, you know the, the ideas that they have about technology, the ideas that they have about politics, about society, like they're a lot of them are very different, right? Like they're you know like if I uh, if like if I went on a Bitcoin stage and I talked about how much I love the vaccines, I'm sure people would like throw things at me. <laughs> um, but maybe in some places, maybe not everywhere. Um, but uh, the um, so. Like just because of that, I think uh, you know, like Bitcoin is not going to go away. Like even if you know Ethereum scales, even if everything I say about like it be becoming more decentralized turns out to be true, look, there's just gonna there is gonna be this big like group of people that still is gonna love and stay with Bitcoin because it's like Bitcoin is Bitcoin. Like, Bitcoin is the people that they uh, that they love and that they've grown up with. Um, so, grown I think, up with that's a harsh one. Like, mm, yeah, no, no, it's. Uh, I, no, 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 I really do think that you know both Bitcoin and Ethereum have uh, enough people that are kind of like very you know, just like dedicated with their with their lives to it to that extent that it's uh, you know neither of them are going to disappear. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you know these really are digital nations in a way. Another one. What's your opinion about NFTs communities and projects in art and gaming? Hmm. I mean, I am. Like I'm very happy to see that um, you know NFTs are um, like just are so successful among among artists. Like I think uh, you know thing like art is a yeah, like it is a public good. It's something that provides value to a lot of people, but it's something that can be very difficult to find business models for directly. Um, and the fact that NFTs are coming to exist as a business model, I think, is something really amazing. Um, it's uh, like I'm definitely happy to see it, just like there being more models for funding things. Um, the 
Chell, the so that's like the good side, right? And uh, like what I'm what I'm hoping for now, I think, is to try to like one is uh, I think uh, like you can't declare victory until you've survived at least one like full market cycle, right? Like NFTs so far, like okay, they you know this this has been a bull cycle, um, and NFTs have done well, but we have not seen a bear cycle yet. Are NFTs going to survive a bear cycle? You know, are any of like are you know the crypto punks and the opti punks and like all of the you know the what you know the loot and the ether orcs and all of this stuff like are you know are they going to go to zero three years from now like or you know the next time that like you know bitcoin or eth go down by 80 percent which you know nobody knows where they start from but you know people have to be prepared that that, that like wherever the the bear market starts from you know there is going to be a bear and everyone should be like psychologically prepared for that you know are the nfts going to drop by 50 percent or 80 percent or 99 percent we don't know yet i think uh, like until nfts as a thing have survived a full cycle like i think it's important for us to kind of not declare victory with nfts yet right because like icos were a bubble Lots of ICOs ended up failing. Are NFTs going to last? We'll see. Um, but I think part of the solution to NFTs lasting, like part of the way in which NFTs can become something that lasts, is if we start seeing NFTs that have more functionality attached. If we start seeing NFTs that are not just about like buying and bragging, but NFTs that are like about like, oh, I have this thing and I can use this thing to do things. Like this is a virtual item and it has some value in this kind of virtual, you know, decentralized metaverse that we're all co-creating. Like, if we can come up with something like that, then, like, that's an NFT that I think could have very meaningful long-term value. Um, so, like, is that art? Is that a game? I don't know. Like, I think, you know, the categories are all merging, right? Yes. Like, yeah. Like, I don't, you know, Entertainment, information. Yeah, yeah, but, you know, it'll all come together. And I think, like, the, like, what's the combination that can actually succeed and that actually can provide the sustainable value to people? I think we're going to find out. You mean uses besides, like, mm -hmm. something that good for the community and owns them? Yeah. <laughs> so, what advice would you give to a young 18-year-old, you know, dreaming about the future today? Mm, um, you know, I think um, the, like, the world is open to you. Um, I think it's, uh, we're entering this point where like, there's a lot of like, elements of the old order that are collapsing, and that's true in technology, it's true in politics, it's true in economics, um, it's, uh, um, but at the same time, we're at a place where we're not really sure what the, what the uh, things that replace it are going to look like. And it's a uh, you know part of your choice, part or like, it is your opportunity and uh, your uh, responsibility to like be part of uh, figuring out what that solution is and uh, helping to build it. Um, so you know the world is open. Um, it's uh, I, like blockchains in particular are a space that is uh, I, I think still very accessible. Um, there's a lot of different communities you can go in and like participate, try to build something, um, you know, talk to people locally, um, you know, go online, join the discords, join the telegrams, um, and uh, like try to figure out and see if there's uh, something um, um, out of this space where the, that you can be part of and, so, and uh, something great that you can make. Vitalik. I think a big thank you is in order from all yeah. of us to you. Mm -hmm. I think so that thank I you very much for coming mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. It means a lot. Mm -hmm. Bueno, espero que les haya gustado este resumen así más compacto. A mí las cosas que más me impactaron cuando lo vi fue cuando habló de Argentina y habló de los problemas políticos que tenemos o la falta de capacidad política que tenemos, pero sí la capacidad grande que tenemos en nuestras personas, en nuestros profesionales, la adopción que hay del mundo cripto que no se compara con ninguna otra ciudad del mundo. Eso me pareció que está espectacular. Obviamente lo que habló de Proof of Work y Proof of Stake y cómo va a ser estas mejoras de Ethereum para los próximos años. Seguramente eso va a tener mucho que ver con el próximo bull run. Después también habló de los NFTs y del bear market. Y ahí dijo una frase que para mí es importante, que no puede cantar victoria ningún NFT, ninguna cripto, que no haya sobrevivido un bear market. Y hoy por hoy estamos hablando de muchas nuevas, nuevos tokens, nuevas criptos que todavía no sobrevivieron un bear market. Así que eso es un tema para tenerlo muy en cuenta al momento de hacer la composición de la cartera spot. Ustedes saben que yo la sigo y la voy publicando todos los domingos y me pueden seguir en Instagram. Bueno, y para terminar le dejo un mensaje a los jóvenes sobre responsabilidad y sobre las posibilidades que tienen en este nuevo mundo descentralizado. 
Bueno, si les gustó el video, les pido que me dejen un like, se suscriban y nos vemos en el próximo video. Chao.